Hey, girlfriends. Welcome to another episode of Girlfriends and Goals. We're your hosts, Miosha. And Samaria. This podcast is a space where we'll talk about friendships, life goals, a little bit of pop culture, and all things womanhood. On today's episode, we're talking about a statement that was made to one of us recently and sharing our thoughts on it. So you'll hear more about that in a little bit, but we definitely have a good episode in store for you guys. If you are watching this on YouTube, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and give this a thumbs up. And if you're listening to it on Apple Podcasts, please give us a five-star rating and write a review. All right. So... I have a little bit of a story to share with this statement. Recently, I was at a doctor's office and just like chit-chatting with the nurse. And she was um, you know, interested about what I do and you know what my doctorate is in and all of that stuff. So I start sharing with her. She had a lot of good follow-up questions. Like mm-hmm. she seemed very interested. And so she was saying to me, Well, girl, do it before you get married because once you do, there's just no time. And I took it the way she meant it, like trying to advise me, but it also got me thinking like, Mm -hmm. why do people make that statement? Because that's not the first time that I've heard it. And I don't know how you feel about it. So I just wanted to bring it to the table. So have you heard that before? And what were your thoughts? I can't think of a time where someone has said that to me directly uh but I have heard it said to other people or insinuated like oh good thing you're doing it now Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) it's like oh gosh uh the pressure but yeah I haven't heard it directly um I will say though I feel like in general there's a lot of talk or insinuations around kind of how life will change for women Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's because I am a woman, so that's- you hear it more, yeah. yeah I, maybe I'm hearing it more, but I don't know. I feel like even in the content that's out there, there's just a lot of talk around how life will change for women after marriage or ex- expectations of women, Yeah, you know, once you're married. What about you? It was It was my first time hearing it directly towards me, but I think I have heard it when I'm in groups of other women, you know, so- uh, usually from older women saying that to us. And I've definitely heard it said to a lot of other people in my Mm -hmm. 30 some years of living. So yeah, it wasn't anything new, but maybe because I was the only one there and she was talking directly to me, not just a group that I was included in. It just felt different. Also, I'm a little bit older than the last time I heard it. So maybe that's Mm -hmm. why. I don't know why I had an interesting reaction to it this time. So when she said it to you, I mean, you you say you took it for what she said, mm-hmm. but I guess what was your reaction? Like, did you say like, oh, okay, or <laughs> were you tempted to follow up? Because now, I don't know, maybe it's the age I'm at now where I'm like, oh, okay, well, why? Why do you say uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, with it being a doctor's office, I... I I don't really be trying to have long conversations Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, you try to be in and out. Right. So I just smiled and I nodded. Mm. That was it. That was it awkward? I don't think it was awkward at all. Like she was doing what she was doing and you know, we're just chit-chatting. So it didn't feel awkward to me. I think it was after I left that situation that it kind of stuck with me. Would you say that she was your contemporary no, or no, no. in your age group? So she was older, younger? Oh, yeah. She was maybe mid to late 50s. So and, old enough uh, to potentially be your mom. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> was she herself married? Did you see a ring? Dang. I'm yes, just curious. Uh, I'm, I'm curious because I'm, I'm trying to get an understanding of kind yeah. of who she is and where she is in life um, that may have motivated her to make that statement. mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, older woman, fifties, mid to late. Uh, I don't remember seeing a ring, but she also had on gloves. So, Mm -hmm. you know, because of the situation that we were in and uh, she's from Latin America. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. That's about all that I, I remember but you know she did say 
oh, that's something that I would have been interested in if I wanted to stay in school longer. So mm. I don't know, maybe just hearing about what I'm doing had her thinking about previous ambitions or yeah, whatever. Yeah, her life. I did not know. Yeah. Okay. But it felt yeah. like a regular thing. It didn't feel awkward at all to me. Yeah. But I, I also have a high threshold for our situation. So <laughs> I might not be the best person to ask that question to because I, I will sit in an awkward situation. Yeah, uh, I I will say in the times that I've heard it, I don't think I've heard that advice from a single woman mm-hmm. <laughs> and not of my contemporary at that time. Yeah, It's always been from an older woman or a woman who's married, been married, and a woman who also has kids. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, and when you say older, you don't mean just 10 years. You mean like 20 or more? No, I would say at least 15 to 20 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but- mine was like 20 or more. That okay. That essay. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think people mean by that statement? So if we're just taking it for what it was, like I said, I did, what do you think when you hear that statement? What do you think the intent is behind it? Well, I think to start with what they mean mm-hmm. is it's probably a good idea for you to accomplish or do the things. Yeah. Specifically, I think we're talking about career, ambitions, education, Hmm. do those things, maybe even experiences, um, just as a general statement, Yeah, do those things before that time period, because when that time comes, you may be severely limited. I think there is an assumption there. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as the intent, I don't know. I think on the surface, it's harmless in that they're just passing on what they know, Uh, could be traditions, culture of, hey, this is how we've always done it or what we think or believe. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think you should too. But I I think there's also something deeper there, but I'll let you share a little bit. Yeah. I, I, so I feel this way about taking advice from anybody. Like one of our, I think second, our second episode maybe was about not all good advice is uh, relevant advice or something like that. I'm screwing up the title, <laughs> but it was something like that. So I think, especially when it comes to people in a different generation, I think there are certain areas where their advice is invaluable and in certain areas where I'm like, well, I want to see how you live that out yourself. One of those areas mm-hmm. for me is like romantic relationships, just because what might have been acceptable to them during their time, things have changed now. So I might filter certain things that they say. And then uh, when it comes to like marriage and career, I'm always a little hesitant. Like I want to see how they did their things and what the circumstances were. So when it comes to this, I think the intention is, listen, I've I've been there, I've done it. I want you to be aware of what's on the other side of this and how your like time requirements can change once you make this jump. So like you said, I think it's harmless on the surface, <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of like underlying things that are available there. Yeah. Um I'm glad that you brought up the differences in generation, I think kind of regardless of the generation, uh, it could apply. I think sometimes it's just giving you the real tea, just their lived experiences. Because I could imagine maybe even for some of them, they may have gone into marriages or relationships, having all the conversations and thinking that things were maybe going to be one way, Mm -hmm. but they're giving you the real tea, the real lived experience. Um, Even if the barriers of age and kind of what was expected at that time were different, Mm -hmm. um, they may have, they may feel like, okay, well, yeah, girl, you may think this way, but I've lived it. I've seen other women around me live it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, So I'm giving you the real tea. Now, I'm not saying that it's applicable. It's just their version of their real life experiences. It's their truth. It's their experience. And 
with the whole like age thing culture for me is another thing so mm -hmm. as an African woman uh and just being familiar with my culture there are certain things that I think need to be filtered out there as well so mm -hmm. uh but if they're saying like oh I, I've lived this and I've seen other people live this okay other people from where you're from other people mm -hmm. in your age group so those types of things so I, I'll, I'll take it but it's yeah, it's one of those things where I'll hear it and mm -hmm. be mindful of it. I think it's always important to be mindful that that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, anything is possible. Right. And then just maybe work towards making it hopefully not my own reality because I wouldn't want it to be. So what would you say are the actual messages that are being spread when they say things like, oh, girl, you... You got to get it done, get it wrapped up. You know, I think the biggest message that they're sending is that marriage is a ridiculously large sacrifice for women's ambition. Like if you mm -hmm. enter into this institution, this covenant, however you want to describe it, that you better be willing to put both feet into that and kind of leave your individuality at the door. And it's not the best brochure for marriage, especially not for us girlies in 2023, <laughs> you know, like I mean, if you are trying to tell me that this is what's required for me to, you know, be in this institution, maybe you just, you just lost yourself a customer, like, you yeah. know. Uh, and how so realistic is that? Yeah. For women of our generation who've been very much raised <laughs> yeah. to be a certain way and value certain things. I, I, we have this in common. We were raised to value education. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do you flip the switch on that of like, oh, up until a certain point? Yeah, like you guys passed on certain values, like independence to us so that we wouldn't have to endure the things that maybe you did. So don't be surprised if we are thinking of things differently because of how you raised us. Like that's the whole point. You raised us to be independent and now we are and independent. I think maybe other generations don't account for the fact that them giving us this like whole independent mindset means that mm -hmm. we're freeing ourselves from some of the things that they still find acceptable you know? Mm. And I think that can be the disconnect. It's like, okay, I wanted you to be independent in the ways that I wasn't or in the ways that I wanted you to be, but I didn't want you to be independent in the ways that I still think are okay to be dependent or, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's where an issue arises with the generation. I think, I don't know if it's a message um, mm -hmm. or it's just something that kind of goes unsaid with this way of thinking is it takes the focus off of how important the partner is mm. in this whole conversation. Yeah. And so I think it's like, let's focus on the institution and the process and how things are supposed to be, but everyone will experience marriage differently because there are different people involved. More specifically for women, our partners are different. Mm. They're not carbon copies. And so I hate to say it, but yeah. Your partner can make or break your marriage and not to throw shade or anything, but maybe your experience of having to put things on hold or not do this or that is a result of the partner and not the institution. And that's, that's the thing. I think there's such a huge, uh, I was watching this, this clip from Wife Swap the other mm -hmm. day. And Kiera Lachey, who you've oh, yeah, yeah. out several times. Did I send that to you? You did. <laughs> Girl, I, I love sending uh, memes and stuff to my friends. I perfectly mm. curate what goes to each person. So, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I was watching Wife Swap and, you know, Kiera Lachey came into this lady's home and she was saying, yeah, your husband and your kid helped me cook dinner. They helped me wash dishes. Whereas the lady whose family it actually was, she was like, oh, you know, women belong in the kitchen. Men don't belong in the kitchen and all this stuff. So uh, yeah, I just think those differences exist. And in that example, 
it was just amazing how you would think in a Kira Lachey assumed that it was the husband pushing the husband. this, but it's was the wife mm-hmm. who was holding on to these ideas. And he was just like, Oh, well, I don't have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. He and was so it's more like, than girl, willing you to help. yourself because you had the type of partner who was okay with helping you, but you've taken on these tasks um, because you're so married to the institution and not thinking about maybe the person who you're partnered with or getting their feedback. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was really, really interesting, but I think you have a point there where it's the partner and not necessarily the institution. Or yeah. I think in our day and time, the institution just doesn't look as cookie cutter as it might have before. So, And I don't think that before it was. I think before it was, it, okay, let me rephrase that. Not even that it's not as cookie cutter as it was before, but the way that it's presented. So, you know, like on social Mm -hmm. media, we can see different people, different family structures, different Mm -hmm. spousal structures that exist. Whereas before it was like what you see on your TV, which is highly produced and, Mm -hmm. you know, people saying this is what a wife should do. This is what a husband should do. So I I feel like we're getting away from that because there's more visibility to different types of partnership um, everywhere. Yeah. And I think more people are just adapting or they feel freer to openly do just what's going to work for them. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah. okay, well, we have a different setup or my husband helps with this or I take on that or whatever, mm-hmm. but we're just going to do what works for us. Yeah, And yeah. if you don't like it, you should just mind your business. Yeah. And it's, so back to like the messages, that's the idea that the message that they're spreading is that there's very little flexibility. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I hope that's not true as <laughs> someone who aspires to do that. But from marriages that I've seen, it isn't really true. Yeah, to not expect too much, which is so interesting that I think there is this huge pressure for mm-hmm. women to aspire to marriage. So we're aspiring to something, but don't expect too much. Right. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Do you feel like men get asked the same thing or told the same thing? Like, oh, do it now before you settle down. Uh, I think, no, Mm -hmm. maybe it's not said, but I do think that it's the opposite, at least when it, for women in terms of career ambitions, Uh, I think men are expected to thrive Mm -hmm. after marriage because there's this huge responsibility One way I think that it is similar, though, is that while they're expected to thrive, I think it's within reason Mm -hmm. and with minimal risk. So Mm. something that I have heard or expectations that I've observed in other families around me is just that like, okay, the the husband or the dad can be successful, but up into a certain point where it doesn't put your family at risk. So say you want to start a business or you're Mm -hmm. trying to go back to school. I don't know if in that instance that someone will say to the husband of, oh, well, uh, you shouldn't do that. But I do think that there is this pressure of, okay, if I'm the one responsible for providing for the family, Mm -hmm. it's or for my wife, it's probably best that I don't take certain risk or that I do that before I enter a marriage. Interesting. Um, Yeah. So based on the people who I've seen, that hasn't been the case uh, because there, but I think I have like a lot of entrepreneurs, maybe, you know, in family and close friend groups. So it's like almost at some point expected that somebody's going to take that risk. And, you know, I think the expectation a lot of times is, oh, the family, will be should be okay with it Uh, yeah I don't think it's said per se outright Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a oh you shouldn't do it I mean if he's gonna do it he's gonna do it I think people are less likely to give men feedback on the things Mm. that they're doing or not doing I don't know that men men are policed as much as women are but I think Mm -hmm. the quiet rumblings I guess Hmm. Um, the gossip, think, yeah, the gossip. <laughs> Quiet, like, oh, bro, you really girl. tried to dress that up. That was good. It's like, oh, he's leaving this six-figure job to 
go gambling, whatever, or go mm-hmm. do whatever. And he has a wife and, you know, so I don't know that it's, is in your face. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that men do feel a different pressure when coming up to those types of decisions, not to say they don't move forward. Cause I have people around me who clearly move forward on those yeah. things. But I think when I've observed a woman who's like, Oh, I want to start X business or I want to go back to school or whatever. Uh, I think it is observed a bit different with men. Mm. No, that's interesting. So we actually asked a few people how they would react to this statement of, well, do it now before you get married, because once you get married, you don't have any time. And so we're going to share some of their responses with you guys. I'll let you start with one of yours first. All right. So the first one is that they say that this is false. Sometimes marriage and a great partner will give you quite the opposite effect. They will empower and support you to do it. But replace that with before you have kids, and I'd say you're on to something. Okay, fair, Mm -hmm. fair. Okay, so this one is like a reflection on the person's own marriage. So Mm -hmm. uh, she said, my husband and I have a deal that we never want to look back on our lives and say, I would have done that, but, and the other person comes up after the but. So I'm not sure if there are any goals marriage has interfered with for me. Parenting would be different. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah um and then just a little word of advice <laughs> if I have to say one thing it would be to get to know and heal yourself well before you get married navigating marriage will be a lot easier when you're coming in as a complete person not needing another to be whole mm. thank you for a the word. words of wisdom okay, okay a word <laughs> <laughs> this question right. got her um uh, wheels turning <laughs> yeah All right. So the next reaction was that they strongly disagree. If anything, I think that's more of a conversation once you start or if you plan on having kids. So there's a theme here. Yeah, there is. Um, I wonder if we should do a follow up episode of do it before you have kids. Everybody would probably agree with that part, though, because I could just imagine how much energy (laughs) that takes like you. But, But I don't think so surprisingly yeah because I feel like now that I'm a parent I'm more observant of just the levels yeah so I think from what I've heard like the initial stage is something where you want to be very like hands-on so for a few years it might prevent a thing or two depending on how much help you have and then I've also heard like Um, the teenage years, depending on how hands-on of a parent you might want to be, like preteen to teenage years. Um, And the the individual child too. Yeah. I mean, some of us are easier. And how many? (laughs) Not not her saying some of us, girl. Don't make me interview your mom on this podcast. (laughs) I promise I was the easy child. (laughs) Okay. So this response made me chuckle. Um, So, and this is no shade to anybody. This is just this person's reaction. Okay. Um, So it says, I guess that's true if your spouse is prone to selfish, self-centered, hater energy. But if not, why can't you pursue your goals alongside them? But the exception here um, of like something to do that she said prior to marriage is travel mm-hmm. solo she's like it she can see how that might interfere obviously because mm-hmm. you probably want to take take trips with them they want to take trips with you so she was like that's probably the only exception is traveling solo but mm-hmm. yeah okay so these these four were from people who are married already uh, mm-hmm. I did ask one unmarried person just to see what the reaction would be and if it would be like any Mm -hmm. different um so this was the reaction to that um sounds good but not too realistic depending on when you get married you're still either figuring out your life still pursuing your goals if time allows you to accomplish these things before marriage then for sure do it if not make sure you do it while being married with the help of your partner some people may not have the opportunity to get it done while married depending on who they put first in their marriage or how flexible and supportive their partner is. Sometimes it may take longer because you may have to sacrifice your goal at the moment for your family, but marriage is not a stopping point for goals and dreams. 
Mm. It's given consensus. We have. Yeah. <laughs> We definitely have a consensus. So you guys let us know in the comments what your reaction is to this. And since this came up during the conversation, do you feel like there's a difference between doing something before you get married or mm -hmm. uh, doing something before you have children? Let us know what that difference is. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, come on over to our YouTube channel yeah. and chat with us in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so we are going to end on a bit of a new segment. So we do reactions on our YouTube channel to the Reddit Am I the A-Hole post. So if you haven't checked out those videos, feel free to check them out after this one. And so we figured since we're doing whole videos of those on our YouTube channel, we might as well here and there add a segment of it in our podcast episodes. So Miosha, you have one to read to us? That I do. <laughs> All right. Am I the a-hole for telling my future mother-in-law we will not have a stranger at our small wedding? Initially, I'm going to say no, but let's read on. Okay. Hi, all. This all started yesterday, and I feel conflicted on who is in the wrong here. Hmm. My fiance, 26-year-old male, and I, 24-year-old female, are planning on getting married next year. It will be a semi-small ceremony on a beach in the Bahamas, okay, island vibes, with <laughs> approximately 10 to 15 of our closest family members and friends. We were trying to keep it small as we only wanted a few people at the ceremony and planned on having an informal party for everyone to enjoy once we returned home. However, yesterday, one of one day after announcing this to my fiance's family, they are trying to talk us into allowing my future sister-in-law's boyfriend to attend the ceremony. None of the family have ever met him, and the sister will not answer any of the future mother-in-law's questions or send any pictures of him because she doesn't have a good picture of him. <laughs> the only information, the only information we have is what we have found by doing our own digging. According to, the, according to the mom, they have been dating approximately 10 months. The mom was being pushy yesterday, trying to get us to say yes by telling us to trust her judgment. He must make 100 to 200K. And what if her sister wanted to bring her boyfriend? My sister doesn't have a boyfriend and she's in high school. <laughs> She better not. Her only boyfriend better be her science and math and English books. Oh, gosh. Well, today we went over to the mom's house to discuss this further and it made things worse. The mom will not take no for an answer and try to say that the sister will not attend if he is not welcome. Where's the sister in all this? I'm confused. Okay. The mom also told us that he will be going to the Bahamas with them, which is why we should allow him at the ceremony. So he's going to go regardless. That's what right. it sounds like. She said that we are not considering the sister's feelings and repeated it multiple times. She also said that if she, she also said that if the sister is upset and does not attend, then my fiance's brother will become upset. Okay. Wait, so if one sibling doesn't attend, the other sibling's going to be mad too. I assume that's what they meant. Okay. Okay. Just making sure I, you know. <laughs> Yeah, basically saying, oh, if my siblings, if she doesn't want to go or can't go because her boyfriend can't go, then the other brother isn't going to A domino go. effect. Okay. Yeah. We tried to explain to the mom that we do not care if he goes to the Bahamas, but Ooh. the ceremony will only be for our closest friends, family, not strangers. Mm -hmm. My future father-in-law asked why we can't do this one thing for the sister and said the boyfriend could just be a beach walker that stops to watch the ceremony. Ugh. We said that they may not even be together at the time. And the mom responded by saying that if they break up, the sister can just bring a friend in, which confused me even more. Okay. <laughs> the boyfriend can't even come. What should we do? There's nobody to replace. He's not invited. We're almost done. <laughs> my fiance and I are conflicted on the on this issue because he wants to please his family and it's only one more person but at the same time we do not want a stranger at our wedding ceremony when it was supposed to be small and just our closest family and friends mm -hmm. we are open to him attending the party but not the ceremony this is stressing both of us out so are we in the wrong for telling the family no thoughts huh. Okay, so 
why is the sister dodging questions about this man? So it's not even that he's like a stranger, like, oh, we know things about him. And, you know, you guys have been dating for 10 months, but it's that you won't show us his picture. You won't tell us anything about him. He could be a serial killer for all they know. It doesn't sound like they've met. No, not even the mom. And she's like, well, trust my judgment. Your judgment of what? You haven't even met him. I, first of all, I do think 10 to 15 is a very small number. So if they can pull it off, kudos to them. For a destination wedding though? 10 to 15, that's not, that's not small? Oh, it's very small, but for destination, that's what I would expect. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe maybe they're not from big families because 10 to 15, I don't even think that would be my siblings and my nieces and nephews. Yeah, I think for destination weddings, I usually see, like when you see them over 25 people, that's getting into the bigger size. The whole point is for it to be small. Miosh is our um, resident destination wedding person (laughs) ever since she planned one for herself. (laughs) I mean, yeah, even when more people said yes to come to mine, Mm -hmm. I was shocked. Pretty much everyone came that we invited. So for me, yours was the bare minimum. Like that's, that's how I took that. Okay, like this is on average what you can expect. But 10 to 15 and from like two sides of the family. Yeah, usually it's siblings. And parents, maybe a best friend or two, and that's it. Okay. And they specifically said that they wanted it small. So it's not like they sent out a bunch of invitations and then are expecting it to be small. A bunch of invitations. If you only invited 10 to 15 people, you want it to be small. I don't think they're the a-hole. And here's why. Because they're letting him come to the party, which would be where the food is. I have never seen Mm -hmm. that a, a wedding ceremony. So I think that's nice. Like you can come and have fun with us I think that's a very fair compromise but like you know people exchange intimate vows at their wedding um it's a very for some people like sacred moment Mm -hmm. so they might not want someone who has only first of all they might not want someone who's not in their lives has only Mm -hmm. been in the sister's life for 10 months and who might not be in the sister's life forever so I can understand how they feel about that and maybe the parents shouldn't push as much as they are doing it's just a boyfriend it's not like he's a fiance or a husband so the mother-in-law is trying it hardcore and in fact it's giving me she's looking to create an issue Mm -hmm. where there isn't one I feel like there's something else brewing here because I don't understand why she would be going so hard for the sister's boyfriend who she hasn't met ever. Mm -hmm. And the sister doesn't seem to be a part of the, any of these conversations. Why wouldn't the sister go talk to the brother and the bride and say, Hey, I want to bring this person. It doesn't even sound like she's lobbying on her behalf. The mom brings up the fact that the person makes a hundred to 200 K. So what it sounds like is that mama dearest wants beef with her future daughter-in-law, one. Two, she doesn't want to miss the opportunity to maybe show this potential future son-in-law, the boyfriend at that time. There's only 10 people coming from both sides. For whatever reason, she wants him to be around in the fold of the family. And I think she may feel like, oh, it may look bad if he doesn't get an invite. Something about this man and the money that he's making First wants all, this mother-in-law to do the most, to have a, him to be there. There's a wide range between 100K and 200K. So it's like, that's very vague, you know? <laughs> and my, what does that have to do with her at this what does stage? That have, he could be <laughs> someone who makes good money and is a serial killer. Again, are we not? Like, does nobody care about this man being a serial killer besides me? <laughs> like, is that and why make the wedding the first event where he's meeting everyone and why does it have to be y'all's day no I don't think you're being an a-hole I think that your Mm mother-in-law is looking to start drama with you and she got your future father-in-law on board your your uh, future husband needs to stand his ground on this one you can't stop him from coming to the resort or wherever you're staying or right. being there in general. But 
that's what I was gonna say. To be fair, they it sounds like they'll meet him on the plane ride over or um at the airport or at the resort. So they will have some interaction with him prior to their day. And you know, why is the mom so invested in getting this man to be at the wedding? I think it's it's a control thing, you know, mm-hmm. when it comes I asked, to parents and yeah. ceremonies. What do they say? Uh, funerals and weddings, that's when people show their yeah. like true colors or whatever. So mm-hmm. I think it's it's one of those things. And this whole, well, if you do this, then everybody's going to be upset. I'm not fully buying that. Um, we don't know. These are all what if situations we don't know for sure that the brother's gonna get mad he probably doesn't even care is he married is his person invited like and this guy probably doesn't even care she's fighting tooth and nail and he probably would be like okay yeah i mean i don't let me read the edit okay i should also add that the sister travels constantly for her job unless she takes off she does not have an apartment or a home because she is literally always traveling so nobody knows how much time they physically have spent together. So I think oh. she added that to say that this sister is never even in one place, really. She's been dating this guy for 10 months. Is it like a normal 10 months of dating? Mm-hmm. Or is it, I've seen you twice in 10 months. Yeah. Or and this so- guy could have a whole nother life. Yeah. That the sister doesn't know about. I wouldn't mind if it was like, oh, he's coming to a family reunion or another event where, um, another event where I was going to say people will have to pay for him to eat, but then again, they're inviting him to the reception. I don't know. People can be very funny about their weddings and very particular about their weddings. So I think it's the fact that it's the ceremony. They said that they're going to have this party uh, for everyone back at home. Mm-hmm. So I think it sounds like they were encouraging him to show up at that. At that. Oh, yeah. okay. Where it's more casual, more relaxed, but I get it. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily want to be meeting new people yeah. so on my wedding day either. That's the thing. If it's, like I said, a family reunion, um, you know, like the repast, the, if it's like a lot of other events, you can say, okay, well, I need him here to be a support to me mm-hmm. or whatever. But when it comes to the, wedding of these two people the day is about them and so they should be the ones who get to decide so I think she she wanted to be about her the (laughs) mother-in-law I think she's very sweet for being like am I in the wrong but you know she's not yeah yeah that's just me (laughs) anyway um like we said we do this on our youtube channel so make sure you check it out i think we usually do like three or four in our regular ones but Mm -hmm. because it's a segment on the podcast we're just gonna give you guys a little taste (laughs) with one uh, so you guys can check out the rest of the videos but thank you guys for tuning into another episode of the girlfriends and goals podcast make sure you follow us on instagram at girlfriends and goals podcast to share your thoughts on this topic or in the comments below um if you haven't subscribed already go ahead and do that now and don't forget to rate review and share until next time bye bye